elevator bolts. What in the heck are elevator bolts? They are also called carriage bolts. And what they are, they are the, the bolts that hold your camper to its frame. Most fiberglass campers have some form of carriage bolts or elevator bolts. With U-Haul, they're particularly called elevator bolts. But I wanted to show you what happened to mine over time because one of the things that U-Haul did that was not top notch was not use stainless steel. So these rust over time, and I don't know if you can see it, but look at that. That snapped right off. And like that is not good holding your camper together. So let's take a minute and let's talk about how we switch these out because it is very important. If I had carried on the way that I was carrying on, eventually over time it may have taken another two to three years. It might have taken another 10 to 20 years. I don't know, but eventually these things would have rusted out and I would have been stuck in a situation. So to bring myself peace of mind, I went ahead and I replaced all of them with some brand new steel five grade uh, zinc plated something that my dad found. These, these are really good bolts. They are not stainless steel, but they are just about as close as you can get and a little less on the budget and um, that's what I need right now, but I don't wanna do this again anytime soon. And I made so many mistakes. I wanted to share my mistakes with you so that if you are in the process of changing out some elevator bolts or some carriage bolts on your old camper, that this will help you along in the process. <laughs> if I would have had this to start with, I probably wouldn't have made as many mistakes, but I probably should have done more research because the master winger of things messed up. So I'm gonna share with you how I messed up. Today was not a master class level in master winger of things. This is what it looked like when we took the uh, one elevator bolt out to make sure that we were ordering the right product. And um, it's all rusted, you can kind of sort of see it. But surprisingly, I didn't have to cut the bottom on the nut here. It actually came right off and it seems like it's coated on the inside. But as you can see, these are rusting pretty bad. This camper has had two previous owners, so I don't know if these have been replaced already, but judging by the condition of them, they definitely need to be replaced before I'm comfortable getting back out on the road. So I'm trying to get this fixed up before, before I head back out to get back to Tennessee and make sure that everything is secure and What's the word that I'm looking for? Safe. <laughs> I just wanna make sure it's safe that my camper will not detach from the frame because these elevator bolts are what hold the camper to the actual frame. So that would be really terrible if I'm driving down the road and it starts to detach because these are breaking from the pressure of the wind or whatever as you're going down the interstate. So that has always that's been in the back of my mind since I got the camper. I knew it needed to be done, possibly if the previous owners hadn't done it. Um, I did have some water that built up underneath my uh, vinyl flooring that I have, my little cheap vinyl cutout that I have, uh, and I was unaware of that. So it did do some damage to the fiberglass. I also have to fix the fiberglass where it weakens some of the areas, which I'll have to get a whole kit for that. I'm also going to be working on the taillights this week before I go to and figure out a way, the best route. Uh, the gasket is all one piece that's in the taillight, so I'll do another episode on that when we get to that part. But today we're just focusing on the elevator bolts and how that's going to work out when we get all of this replaced. So right now I'm just trying to clean up around the camper. My dad's going to come out and help me here in a while uh, when I need his assistance on you know, getting some of those elevator bolts out from the top because getting this one out was actually quite easy. I don't know if the rest are going to be as easy as this one, so I might need a second hand to help me with the rest of, of getting all that out. We'll be documenting as much as I can while we do this, um, just to show you guys what the process is like, but fun stuff, elevator bolts. <laughs> Rupert's not going to like this very much, but before my dad gets out here, I'm going to go ahead and get the camper cleaned out, get the vinyl flooring peeled up and then get my bed, all my bedding stuff taken out because that foam covering that back area, I need to get down in underneath to be able to get to the elevator bolts. So we're gonna get started.
right, so you can see the elevator bolt that we took out. That was the easiest one to get to, but uh, because of the water damage that I had, and this has all been deep cleaned, but it's just old fiberglass. It kind of looks a little wonky, but um, this is all soft as well. We're going to have to replace and or patch, put a fiberglass patch over this area that has softened from the water damage. So I don't know if these were as bad rust out because when I first got the camper, I didn't think that they were. And now I'm, uh, now I'm seeing how badly all of those little spots in the camper rusted out because somehow water got in here. And I think Charlie's a little nervous because I pulled out her bed. But anyway, so we're going to be working on getting all of those little elevator bolts taken out and replaced. All right, so this is what we're going to replace these old bolts with. And then they have a nylon insert in some of the old um, nuts. So those are still viable nuts. They actually fit right on the... Uh, elevator bolt the new one just fine so they will fit these perfectly and we'll get everything replaced and see um, how it goes because there's quite a few to replace I think we've got like 20 bolts to replace in the floor so I'm gonna work on getting the rest of this stuff cleaned out so we can access everything and then we'll get started And something else that I just wanted to mention, y'all, if I can fix stuff like this, so can you. But learn from my mistakes, okay? Before you start taking elevator bolts off, I highly recommend dissecting your camper, taking everything out, looking at all the places on the floor where they are at, and seeing if you can get to the top of the elevator bolt because I ran into a situation where I can no longer access the top of two of those elevator bolts and I already broke them off from the bottom. So there's not really a solution there to put another elevator bolt in its place unless I take some wood out that's glued to the floor or I take some stripped, uh, I have to drill through some uh, steel <laughs> screws to be able to get the battery box off that are stripped and that's just not feasible, it's not possible. So, um, you know, sometimes you have to make decisions around what you've done. And I think my dad and I talked it over, we researched, it's gonna be okay with what I have in there holding the camper to the frame. But before you start on your project, especially if it's like a scamper or a casita with less elevator bolts to contend with, you don't have the flexibility there to miss one or two of these along the way because this is it guys, this is all that's holding your camper to the frame, period. You have to map it out. So, you know, take note of where you don't want to unscrew these because I would have left the two in that I broke off because some support in there was better than none and now I have none because I can't access the top to get the bolt all the way out and replace it. So in the process, I thought this was gonna be a day project and I was gonna get it done in one day. Hmm, no, no sir, <laughs> it takes a little bit longer than a day. So I had to run to the store in between. Um, we did not have a deep socket wrench available as well. And some of the um, bolts or the nuts um, came down too far, not on this one, but they came down too far for uh, not having a deep socket wrench. So I couldn't get the wrench over to unscrew those pieces and uh, so we had to go to a home depot and pick up a deep socket wrench set so that i would have the proper tools to be able to finish this project halfway in between after getting some of the bolts out so that was fun and um, i also picked up some lock screw nuts so that they do not come off especially with all the graded roads that i drive down and uh, they can come off pretty easily if you don't get the correct supplies. So make sure you get the lock screw nuts. I will show you. These are nylon coated lock nuts and that's what I had to use for this camper. So that way when you screw them on, they stay where they're supposed to and they don't start to unscrew over time, which could lead to future huge problems that you don't wanna have. Another thing that I should have done from the beginning was when my dad handed me this impact impact wrench. Is that what it's called? I don't even know. 
Y'all, like, like I said, I wing things <laughs> like this. I am lucky to have a dad for guidance on stuff like this. Um, I did most of the work by myself. My dad did have to help me with a few things. And then also my mom, because my dad had pulled his back previous to this and then re-injured his back in the process of helping me, which I feel terrible about, but what can you do? And um, I could have held off on this project. I would never force my dad to do something uh, to hurt himself, but um, y'all. Hang on, look at this, look at that cute. I love my kids so much. <laughs> Get him, Rupert. Back to the matter at hand. When you do decide to change these out, make sure that you have an impact wrench. I should have started with this at the very beginning because what this does is it, it gives you the amount of pressure that you want to use so you're not going to break the bolts, but it also jiggles them. So it also rattles some of that rust loose to where you can have a higher probability of getting them off a little easier. When I hand ratcheted it, I was doing it a little too hard and that's where some of these snapped very easily. So it is really beneficial to make sure that you have the proper tools when you start. I should have done that from the beginning. We had two that were a major problem that I had to go back and I had to use the angle grinder. Y'all, <laughs> I don't know the names for any of these tools. I just like, I pick them up and I figure out how to use them. I'm gonna hurt myself one day. Um, but the angle grinder, so I got the angle grinder and I had to uh, finish grinding off the top to be able to push it through because the bolt was uh, definitely not jiggled loose because I had hand ratcheted those. And uh, that created a problem. I don't know if using the impact wrench would have made that any easier. However, when I did start using the impact wrench, I was able to go through and just zzz, 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 zzz on most of them. So I didn't have as many problems with the impact wrench as I did with the, the hand wrench. I need to say wrench one more time, wrench. Another huge tip that my dad recommended after seeing what we went through on this uh, was to spray down like the top of the bolts or you know from underneath with WD-40 or something along those lines to allow it to sit for 24 hours and that would hopefully loosen them up a little bit easier before even if they were rusted shut a little bit that might help break it with the uh, impact wrench and you know simultaneously using those two tools to help you get the elevator bolts loose. You may have had a little bit better luck than I did with breaking most of the bolts off. I don't know what's in here, but I'm looking for the elevator bolt because I know that it's going to be in here. Please don't judge too hard because I have lived out of this thing, driving it down some hella dusty roads and everything else, and it's probably dirty as crap in here. But that's what you get when you live out in the desert for like a year. And I think I'm going to have to get some light on here. Hang on. There we go, much better. Now I can see, oh, yep. You can see it, it won't focus on it and get the light, but it's right at the bottom there. That's what I'm looking for. And I'll be damned, I went to go clean all this out and I don't know where this shook loose from because this camper's been cleaned quite a bit in between, but this is an old piece of security glass from my front windshield that busted going through Gallup, New Mexico in 2019 when I first took the camper out on its maiden voyage all the way across the country. And uh, yeah, so that windshield busted and I'm finding it years later. And every now and then I'll find a small piece of it somewhere and I'm like, where does it keep coming from? But yeah, that was a scary situation. Thank goodness we came out unscathed. I also just had to cover everything up because Rupert is trying to get down in there and I just took the bucket out with all the stuff. So this is the bucket that stores everything and it just slips right down in that little cubby and then you have access to the floor underneath. Everything was so well thought out in this camper, but this cat wants to go down in between everything and I can't let him. All right, before I get started on actually loosening the bolts and seeing what I can do, um, we did, like I said before, just to make sure I'm clear on this, we got the grade five uh, zinc plated steel so it should work out pretty well where I won't have to do this again for a while the stainless steel bolts were like eight dollars a pop so when you times that by 20 you know when you're on a budget we still got really good quality but we are I, I am trying to not have to do this again down the road anytime soon 
But what I need is um, an 11 millimeter for the bolts that are on there. And I think that they were replaced at one point, so I'm not quite sure, but we're just gonna make sure that, you know, it's done with something that won't rust. And here we go. So safety first, guys. I'm also gonna jack up the front of my camper so that I have a little bit more room underneath as far as it'll go. And cause it's like right here when you're underneath to try and see what you're doing. But um, you know, when you're looking up, you don't want anything falling into your eyes. So always safety first when you do something, obviously. But uh, here we go. And I've got a jack just in case I don't have enough room underneath to jack the camper up to be able to get to what I need to get to underneath. But we'll try it this way first. It's like it's fused to the fiberglass. Can you please, seriously, dude? Why do you have to be in the middle of everything, honey? But yeah, so this is, it snapped off. You can see like where it was getting really thin. So this is why I guess in the back of my mind, I was so nervous about it. So I don't know if they have been replaced or if U-Haul was just that good where they used lock nuts either way so these still have a coating on the inside so that makes them easy to unscrew but since uh, the material is so weak it just broke on me and i'm trying to get this one elevator bolt up now and i don't know how to do it but we're gonna just very gently there we go i might need to get not wanting to break free from there. It's fused together. I don't want to put too much pressure on that other screwdriver, so let's see here. No leverage in the Fiberglass is really weak here too, so I'm trying to be careful. Okay, well now I need Dad's help just to make sure I don't screw this thing up. But let me go get him. I thought this was gonna go all easy. No, we're making a bigger hole. Well. Um, I don't think it's going to be a bigger hole hole, like, it'll still do what it's got to do. But it might be because that's in one of the worst spots, too, where it has the most damage and stuff to the fiberglass. this is why it's good to have a dad that knows what he's doing because I thought I was unscrewing this one this one actually still has the bolt underneath and there's one literally right here that I thought that I was unscrewing and uh, I was that's the one that broke and now we have to figure out I have to get a deep socket wrench because the wrench won't fit on the bottom of this one so it's a good thing we stopped and double checked to make sure I was in the right spot um, but I thought that that was the right one. This one has, I'll show you underneath. This one has a bracket. So I was trying to get it away from the bracket. 
and then this one does not have a bracket. So it's screwed in right here and I messed up with that. So this is why it takes a really long time to get this stuff done. I thought it was gonna be a breeze, but it's not. And I cannot get to this one underneath because the air conditioning unit from the top is right here. Rupert, get out of there. Rupert, go, no. Anyway, so I cannot get down in that little cubby there. My hands won't fit. So we're either gonna have to take the air conditioning unit out or we're going to have to take this cover off to be able to get to that bolt to remove it. And I'm also gonna have to go get a deep socket wrench uh, from Home Depot or uh, what's the other one, Lowe's or somewhere that has one. My dad's looking for one now because I can't get that one bolt off, but um, we'll figure it out. It's just gonna be a day or two project. This stuff always takes longer than you anticipate it's going to take, but I'm gonna keep working on these bolts so that I'm not hung up on this one bolt while my dad's trying to get the other stuff for me to be able to fix this. I should have started way earlier in the day because this is going to be an all day project. Now I have to try and get this unwedged from the socket wrench that I was using and we have to go get deep socket wrenches and I can't get to one of the bolts and I'm only in about four of the uh, elevator bolts. So I haven't accomplished very much. This has been going on for almost an hour now. So. Four bolts an hour it's going to take an awfully long time to do this all right guys safety first make sure you always wear eye protection and keep your mouth closed because stuff falls in and these are a little too big for my face but oh well let's get this party started hmm. i think it broke all right let's take a look Oh man, that one's bad. That one is terrible. Falling apart. This is scary. This is not supposed to look like this. Do y'all see that? Like, look at, look. There's nothing left to it. Let me see what the top looks like. Ow. <laughs> Good God. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh my goodness. Where's the camera? Look at that. No, that's bad. Yikes. Okay. Well, that was, I think, where most of the water damage was in my camper. So that one was one of the worst ones by far. And... Right here, you can tell where the floor is soft. So that's gonna be an upcoming repair in the coming weeks. I'm gonna have to go through and do an epoxy type filler in the floor, like a boat restoration type deal. Um, so that's gonna be fun. Camper repairs, yay. Perfect. Now I can just grab that with. It's really hard to film under here, but um, this little nut came off just fine. And so everyone's a little bit different. It's going to take quite a bit of more time than I have allotted for it, which that's always the case. So I should know better. But um, anyway, so this one came out just fine. And now I'm going to take a hammer and hit the bottom of this lightly to knock it back through the other side so I can grab it and get it up. Safety first, got my glasses, got my earplugs, and I've also got a mask on just to keep from breathing in all this stuff. Not working.
Oh, let me put my thingies on. Ready? Yep. Better? Yep. Okay. Well, that's because it is on the other side too. It's the angle it comes down in. Yeah, I'm gonna go just a little tighter though. Yeah. Okay, I'll have dad take a look later and we'll make adjustments if he feels like we need to. Huh? I said, I'll have dad look later and we'll make adjustments if he feels like I need to, but I should be able to just do it on my own now with somebody watching. Yeah. Let me know when you're ready. Ready? ready? Yeah. Hang on. There we go. Stop. Yeah. Tight enough? Yeah. Okay. Can you go to the one straight across the seat? Yep, this is easy for me. Okay. Ready? Yep. Let me set. Okay. Okay, go. Yeah. Right way. yeah. Okay. It looks like it's just spinning. Yeah, it's just spinning. Is it spinning on top? Yep. Well, I'm holding it, but it's not going anywhere. Huh. Yeah, it's just spinning. Okay, well, it's not catching then. It's, I mean, it moved up a little bit. Let me see what's going on. I still need to shop back, so don't judge. But um, this is one right here. We've got one right there. We've got a new one back here. And this is actually underneath my stove, underneath the camper. So there's a lot of dust and stuff that builds up under here after going down all those dusty roads. I still have to shop back. Rupert, get out. No. Something that was really nice for me, I did reach out to you, Hall, as a shot in the dark to say, hey, I have one of your old campers. You know, I'm looking at restoring it. Here's my plans with doing it. I know it's a shot in the dark. I didn't know if anybody could offer any type of advice on how to go about fixing these issues. And to my surprise, the very next day, I did hear back from one of the U-Haul employees. His name's Bob, he's awesome. Uh, Sent me a lot of stuff that helped me understand how the camper was put together a little bit better and be able to do some work with it. Honestly, when you look at the floor, I'll show you the floor here in just a second, but when you look at the floor, it looks like there's a ton more elevator bolts than what's actually there. So let me, uh, let me show you how it can be confusing if you don't map it out beforehand. Rupert, you look pissed, buddy. Something that is very misleading. This is the floor of my camper. So my bed's over here, cat litter over here, which everybody loves to see cat litter in a camper. I know that for a fact. But uh, anyway, moving on. You can see the shiny bolts right here. This one, where's my finger? This one and this one were replaced. These right here, this set leading up to the shiny bolt these four actually hold the gas line in. So when you're unscrewing those from the bottom, you'll see that, but from the top, it looks more intimidating because it looks like there's more elevator bolts than what meets the eye. If you look under the bed here, those, those two needed to be replaced. So there's six elevator bolts in the U-Haul camper that run the length of it here um, on the inside where you don't have to take the bed out and everything else. And then there are more bolts that run along the front and then the ones by the side here. I have not screwed these in yet uh, from underneath. That's something that if I have to, I could hold the bolt from the top with an impact wrench from underneath and just screw those in myself if I had to. Um, but I've not screwed these in yet because I'll be doing the epoxy on the soft floor here coming up.
So I have to do that first before I can put those in. One place I majorly screwed up is by the door frame here. It looked like when I was underneath the camper that I was, oop, I don't want this to close on my hand, that I was unscrewing this. But in fact, there is another elevator bolt that is, I'm trying to shine some light on there from the inside so you guys can see it through the screen. But there is another elevator bolt that is underneath a block of wood that we have no access to because the air conditioning unit was installed in there. And so this elevator bolt is right underneath right here. And I accidentally went to go and screw that before mapping it out from the top to see if I could have access and I don't. Um, so there was, once I unscrewed that bolt, I would have to take my entire air conditioning unit out and try and figure out how in the world I was going to get that one elevator bolt out from stuff that was glued into the floor. And Rupert, anytime there's an open crevice in this camper, he wants to go right in. You're terrible, dude. Oh man, after all that, I need a shower. I'm gross. Um, anyway, I really hope that this tutorial helped you guys understand the process of the elevator bolts. A little bit better um, just when you get the opportunity before you start let's recap map it out make sure that you have access from the top of the camper to be able to get the the whole bolt out if you are take removing it from the bottom um, make sure before you start on screen because I get a little overzealous and excited about things I don't always um, do things slow and take the time to research because I'm like, let's just bang it out. Let's go, go, go. You can't do that with an older camper because then you run into mistakes like I made. So you got to crawl underneath, make sure that, that the, the one that you're unscrewing is the correct one that matches the top. Because like I said, this one was right next to that one and I made a mistake because there's crossbars that also run underneath this camper that have elevator bolts in them as well. So um, underneath most of these, there's a bracket, um, and these are the ones that run through the crossbar. So the ones that I missed over here is one that runs through the crossbar, one that's underneath my battery box in the back. Um, that one is actually in a bracket. So I went to go unscrew that thinking, you know, that I should have access from the top. I didn't take the time to you know take the battery out yet and check to make sure i have access to it because that's all things that if i would have researched i would have known but i didn't so i just kind of jumped the gun and i went a little fast on this and i should have taken a little bit more time to research beforehand lesson learned the good news about all of this is is when i get done with these repairs i will be back on the road for a few weeks in between um the holidays and I do want to spend the holidays with my family so you know living in their garage is going to make me stir crazy so I'm going to go explore in between come back for Christmas and then after Christmas I'm going to jet set home because I do miss my friends I do miss my life there and I'm so ready to get back I hope this tutorial helped you guys today as far as understanding how elevator bolts work or carriage bolts like I said, Scamp and Casitas have something very similar, so this can apply to quite a few of the vintage fiberglass campers. All right, guys, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me today and learn a little bit about some nuts and bolts. Um, hopefully this gives you a little insight if you have a project similar coming up on how to you know, properly plan your route on how you're going to change all your bolts out. If you liked what you saw, please feel free to like and subscribe. That really helps me out. And I hope to see y'all down the road. Have a wonderful rest of your day and y'all stay safe out there. Replace them elevator bolts if you got to. Nuts and bolts, nuts and bolts. Today we're gonna be talking about nuts and bolts. Well, I'm a nut, are you a nut? Wait, that's not a nut. This is a nut. <laughs> Just like me. I'm a little screwy. <laughs>